out in the open flight line, under the desert sun. RSAF ground crew prepare the Heron 1 UAV for its mission. This UAV is one of four deployed for Exercise Forging Sabre 2015, a large-scale exercise held in Phoenix, Arizona to validate the integrated strike capability of the SAF. Inaugurated in 2012, it's making its debut in the exercise, the fifth in the series. Silent and unseen at its operating altitude, this eye in the sky provides aerial surveillance and reconnaissance and enhanced intelligence of high-value ground targets. Packed with new and improved features, the Heron 1 can fly longer, fly further and see more. It's a more capable aircraft than the Searcher class uh, UAVs. It has uh, three times the endurance from, from Searcher. From eight hours, now we are able to uh, operate up to 24 hours. It has an extended range uh, from uh, 100 kilometers. Now we are able to operate up to 200 kilometers. And uh, lastly, uh, in terms of sensor capability, um, we are able now to able to see uh, targets in color. With a longer endurance means that I will be able to fly further. I will be able to stay over the, the area of operations longer. Uh, and basically, I will be able to find the targets uh, much more efficiently compared to a scenario where I need to recover my UAV halfway. Yeah. So this actually has uh, uh, helped us to increase the uh, amount of uh, intelligence collected to execute strikes. As operators in the ground control station survey the battlefield with the UAV, they look out for enemy targets. Targets that will be taken out by one of these. The RSAF's F-15SG, one of the most advanced fighter aircraft in the world. Loaded with precision weapons, such as the Laser Joint Direct Attack Munitions or LJDAMs, the F-15SGs are ready to hammer the enemy with deadly accuracy. Some distance away at the command centre, I stay glued to an array of 18 huge screens, flashing real-time images and other battlefield data pumped from the Heron 1 UAV. This is the brains of the operation. In a nutshell, the 80-strong command centre processes the information fed from the battlefield and figures out what target needs to be hit and how best to do it. The role of the command centre is actually to sense make the, uh, all the sensory that we have put out there, like the herons and the pilots who are flying out there, and then make the best informed decision to see what are the assets and what are the platforms that we allocate for each of the mission. And now especially we have the Heron with extended hours, extended range. We are, will be able to sense ahead or out sense and very quickly uh, decide and constitute the force to go out there and uh, outshoot any targets that is out there. Multiple enemy targets are spotted and the command centre kicks into high gear. The F-15SGs are activated to respond to the threat. Joining the F-15SGs are the F-16s and the AH-64D Apache attack helicopter. With its own arsenal of lethal 70mm hydro rockets and Hellfire-guided air-to-ground missiles. But getting to the enemy targets is not going to be easy. The fighters and attack helicopters have their work cut out for them. What we have is a very aggressive uh, red air. All the enemy fighters are creating a lot of trouble for us. Uh, so they're highly trained. Uh, they're employing electronic warfare against us, strength in numbers, with tactics uh, that typically we don't see in a typical enemy force. We have to decide how to fight the red air, clear up the lane with really no losses, and then flow into the target area. So we have the maximum number of assets to drop the bombs uh, on the targets uh, that we came for. In the next episode, we see how the Heron 1 UAV, fighter aircraft and attack helicopters work as a strike team to take out the enemy targets.